I've been joined today by Kate Findlay, who was inspired to make a series of quilts by the Hedron Collider. Now, who else would have thought that that would be a good subject for quilts? But, Kate, they are amazing. Thank you, that's very you, kind. You've probably got quite used to them by now, but for the rest <laughs> of them, we think it's amazing. Do you know, it's interesting having them up on the wall again when you haven't had them out for a bit, because it is nice to see them fresh, and particularly under lights like this where they're all sparkly, and you yes. really do you know, appreciate uh, the, the surface construction. So actually, I do quite like you know, seeing them up on the wall again, because Good. as ever, they live under the bed the rest of the time. So, so yes, it was inspired by the Large Hadron Collider, the question I get asked a lot is, am I a scientist? And the answer is no. It was purely, I just saw the information uh, in a newspaper, I just thought that looks interesting, googled it as you do, and was fascinated by what I came across in terms of all the imagery to do with the Large Hadron Collider. So was it geometric shapes and things? Yes, it was originally. Circular. It really was just yes. the geometric shapes and the patterns. But I was very struck by you know, the, the colours I was seeing on this amazing machine. You know, not what you'd expect somehow from a piece of scientific equipment. Mm. So that's what really got me going. In the time I've been working on it, I've then learned an awful lot more about the whole science behind the, uh, the machine and what it does. So I've tried to then build that into some of my work uh, and hopefully get it right because I do get scientists looking at this quite a lot. So I feel I've got to get my facts right. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Just in case, don't want to be challenged. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. So, so you said the colours. So these, uh, you've got blue and green and silver. Yes, absolutely. The, the thing with the whole Hadron Collider is it is... Uh, a big piece of machinery and quite shiny in places so I was I wanted to use lots of shiny um, reflective fabrics so I've got all sorts of fabrics in all of these quilts not the easiest things to work with no at all um, often what I've done with these though they are bonded onto the background just to make it easier to manage and quite a lot of just applique and then stitched on afterwards this big piece is called atomic and actually what's happening here is two things. You've got the large Hadron Collider shape, but also on top you've got these little dots which represent the structure of a chromium atom. So that is actually the correct um, configuration for the chromium atom. So it's about scale. And a lot of the Hadron Collider pieces were very much about scale. You know, thinking about the, the tiny splitting of atoms as well as the huge Hadron Collider, as well as what they were trying to find out about, which is how the universe began. So this piece uh, is called Breakthrough, and I did it actually for the Contemporary Quilt Group um, in about 2009, I think it was actually, uh, when they were having an exhibition on the theme Breakthrough. Now, when you're in the middle of doing a series of work, you tend to uh, carry on with your series, don't you, rather than necessarily break off and make something particularly for an exhibition. So when I knew the title was Breakthrough, I knew I then wanted to, to relate it to my Hadron Collider work. What's happening here again is you've got the whole shape of the Hadron Collider, so this sense of perspective going into the centre. You've got a lot of things like silk, so the dark red and the dark blue is silk, but also a lot of other fabrics happening here. But the, the breakthrough aspect is the fact that here I've got this uh, disc with a, a sheer uh, fabric which is still opaque, because at that point the scientists hadn't had their breakthrough about finding the Higgs boson. So that's really what this piece is about. If we move on to my largest piece, this was my final big quilt uh, called The Alice Adventure. Uh, and this is probably still my favourite out of the whole series. So this piece was very much about the um, scaffolding structure uh, of Alice. Now, on the Hadron Collider, there's four sections. So there's uh, the Alice is actually does stand for a large iron collider experiment. Oh, wow. So that's where <laughs> Alice comes from. Okay. I called it the Alice Adventure because I wanted uh, two things. I wanted the idea of the, the rabbit going down the rabbit hole. Okay. So the two things happening here. But yeah, again, using lots and lots of shiny, sparkly fabrics. And then on the outside, it was the first time I'd used Thermofax screens to screen print. And this is inspired by a scientist called Roger uh, Feynman. Uh, and it's showing the notation for how atoms are split. And so that's what's actually happening uh, all the way around the edge of the quilt. The colour changes happen because you've got different colours behind it. A lot of that's on shears. Oh, right. Okay. 
Uh, and this exhibition is uh, currently on display at Lady So and So as we're filming, and um, it's part of the form part of the structures exhibition. And you won a prize, I think you got. Oh. Which is, <laughs> but I'm not surprised. It's a, it's a beautiful quilt. It's a beautiful, quilt. very Thank just. You. No rosette, though. You no, no. <laughs> well. no. We, we know that you won. We know that you won. Well Thank done. Thank you. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Right, this little piece was actually um, the result of a mistake. I did a, a, a small trial piece, which was the aim of then being made into a bigger quilt. And I didn't feel it quite worked, because I was trying to get this idea of a grid uh, on top of the, the, the sort of Hadron Collider shape. And in the original, it, you just didn't get that sense of perspective depth. So I kind of went back to the drawing board with this one, and I really played around with uh, really drawing out something which showed much more depth, and then had to think about how I was going to translate that into fabric. So I've actually got three quite subtle shades. I've sort of got white and a, a light yeah. grey and a darker grey to try and help get that sense of the perspective depth in the picture. Uh, so I think that you know, has worked a lot better and, and one day I want to come back to this idea and do a lot more on this uh, whole theme of getting the perspective depth in a piece of work because I think it's a very interesting concept. Absolutely, I mean it's, it, it looks stunning. So when you, you, you think about the bigger quilts, do you make yourself a small version to scale or do you just kind of do things in quarters, segments? A mixture of both. I draw, so I'll, I'll have a drawing maybe in colour, sometimes collage, uh, to uh, think about the whole uh, design concept. And then when I'm ready to do one of the big quilts, I always draw out at least one quarter actual size. Right. And that needs to be really accurate. So luckily, the one thing I was good at uh, with maths was geometry. Okay. And so geometry is really important to get that accuracy of mm. the shapes and then you know, use it as a template effectively. But yeah, it'd been very, very important to have that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We used to do that for um, com Mariner's Compass quilts, I seem to remember, yes. um, in, the, in the old days. But if my, my original was obviously always slightly off because the, uh, the whole thing ended up being Very, very difficult. Off. Yes, very difficult indeed, and as isn't you say, it? that original draftman is, is important, as it you is. if you're going to multiply yeah. it up. Well, I think the thing that's always struck me with the whole quilting thing is actually how accurate you really have to be. Mm. And it doesn't kind of come naturally to me to be that accurate. <laughs> Well, you, would, you wouldn't know it. You wouldn't know. You, you disguise it well, Kate. <laughs> now, this piece, Collider, this was the very first of my big quilts. Uh, and it was a bit of a learning curve because I did this as, as one complete piece. Um, all of these sections were then uh, made and then sewn together, so it's pieced. Um, same with the centre. But I made the mistake of doing it all and then whizzing it through the machine and holding it up and thinking it was going to lie flat and then realised that life isn't quite so simple. So, yeah, so mm. quite a lot of unpicking had to happen actually before this uh, worked in any shape or form. And technically, I have to say, it's not, uh, not the most brilliant. Well, I was going to say, you use cha challenging fabrics as well. They're not the, exactly. the easiest and best behaved, are they? They're not. I'm using shears and, you yes. know, all these bits and pieces. It's, it's, I love them. I love the fabrics. But Definitely give actually, a wonderful effect. But yeah, yeah, a pain to use. Challenging to use. Very yes. challenging. But... Then again, okay, as I said, not technically brilliant, but I do love the overall effect. Yes, yes. Okay, so the final piece I want to talk about today is this one. It's called Does the Dark Matter? And that was a play on words. It was two reasons, because it is quite a dark piece, but also it is about dark matter and the whole search for dark matter using the Hadron Collider. So here I've got the idea of the Hadron Collider shape, and this was then pieced in segments, um, and I had to go on a special work workshop to find out how to do that, you know, with uh, foundation piecing, which was great because it did work, but it was very um, nail-biting, as you can imagine, getting yes. it to, to fit. Um, and then also I've got things like here, I've got the pinks and the silvers showing the paths of the atoms, so they're couched on to indicate the paths of the atoms. Uh, and unusually, in the, in the centre, I've got this piece that sticks out, uh, and this was an early piece, and I was quite interested in the idea of having bits and pieces sticking out from the quilts. I did abandon that later on because I realised there's good reason why people don't do that in their quilts, because you can't roll them up. They don't <laughs> roll terribly well, yes. <laughs> so, yes, I gave up on that because um, storing be does become a bit of a problem, yes. actually, which is a shame because I think it's nice to be a bit more uh, creative with the surface, but not terribly practical. 
And, and you've got more sticky outfits in the, these guys, though. They're yes, nice. They're absolutely. Lovely. Yeah, this was the f when I was doing this one, I realised how important it was to have a design wall to plan things mm -hmm. because you've got so much going on in each segment, you know, because at the end of the day, you've got the back of the fabric and the front and what's behind there. Yes. And so all these layers going on yes. and the colours were, were so subtle, you had to really have a, a control over what was happening overall. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a, quite a challenging piece to make. Yes. But uh, yeah, I've always been very fond of it as a, you know, because of the, you know, the work that went into it, I think. And I, li I do like this. Uh, was, is pink um, uh, and uh, these chosen for a reason, the pink, or just because it's a nice contrast to the blue and It dark? was a contrast, but also in the simulations that I was, I was seeing, you know, on the, uh, the, the, the websites and stuff, as I said, they're very, very colourful. You know, I don't know whether the scientists just rather fancy using bright colours in the simulations, but often they did have really quite bright colours. So maybe, just, maybe just so they can see. I don't know. See the, the difference? It might just be that, mightn't it? Yes. To help, them, yeah. help them identify it. Well, thank you so much for showing us around your beautiful collection of quilts. Thank you. It's been you. a real joy. Thank you. Kate. Thank you.